It's also called the Mountain of the Sun, although its summit is usually wrapped in clouds. Mount Elgon in eastern Uganda, a volcano that's been extinct for many centuries. The mountain is famed for its biodiversity. We begin our ascent under the guidance of a ranger from the Uganda Wildlife Authority. For 27-year-old Andrew Tosike, the mountain is everything. So at this point, you can see the volcanic soils are very fertile. You can see the climbing beans. They are doing very well because of the fertile soil here. This place is rich. Thanks to the many mountain streams, a unique ecosystem has emerged. To preserve it, the upper part of the mountain was declared a nature reserve in 1993. At that time, more than 30,000 people had to be resettled. Because if they are to stay in the park, then they do their activities, and they will end up spoiling the, the ecosystem and the streams of water which are coming from the mountains. People were forced out so that nature could develop undisturbed. We go past the highest settlements. Then, after a long trek, we finally reach the nature reserve. It's guarded by the Ugandan military. People are allowed into the national park only with a permit. In addition, the soldiers make sure no one smuggles anything out of the park. We have unique plants here, which if tampered with, these plants can become extinct. We have uh, like the Lobelia elegonesis. If they are destroyed, then the whole world will miss. They are only found up here in the mountain. As we continue, Andrew tells us many animals used to live here, leopards, buffalo, and elephants. But now there are only a few monkeys. Humans have killed or driven out all the other large animals. For example, the elephants, when they were hunted, these are animals with a very high memory, in that when one of them is killed, they will never forget where the friend died from and they will never cross there. So, like for the elephants, I don't think they will ever come back to Uganda. At an elevation of 3,500 meters, we reach our camp. It's quite cold up here, just eight degrees Celsius, but our campfire keeps us warm. Early the next morning, we start our final ascent. The destination, a mountain lake just below Jackson's Peak, 4,165 meters up in the Mount Elgin Massif. With every step, the air gets thinner. The reward for our efforts is a fantastic view of Jackson's Pool. Andrew tells me that for many Ugandans, this is a mystical place. They believe when you come up here, you, select, you make your party from up here, you bathe in this water, you go back and have blessing. The view alone at the highest point of our trek is special. At the same time, I'm eager to hear what the people who were forced out when the national park was established have to say. To meet some of them, we go back down the mountain. Then we see a fire that shouldn't be there. They smoke the bamboos from the park, and at the end, they don't put off the fire, and uh, the fire ends up burning the park. And every such person is arrested. Then you take that person in prison. You just given a one day in prison. Then the second day, you will see the same person moving around you. Andrew thinks the nature protection laws should be more stringent. But at the foot of the mountain, many people yearn for the past. <laughs> When we lived up on the mountain, our lives were good. We had huge farms and everything grew. 
without artificial fertilizer. But then suddenly they told us we had to leave. We were very frightened. We didn't know what would happen to us. Due to the resettlement, 30,000 additional people suddenly had to be provided for. Over time, the soil became exhausted. Landslides after rainfalls became increasingly frequent. For the past four years, help has been coming from the United Nations Development Program. In regular workshops, people around Mount Elgin learn how to use their farmland better, especially by crop rotation and building drainage ditches, because it rains frequently here and hard. Most of the farmers were not well versed as to how they can protect the environment. But since NDP introduced its activities in this place, Many activities have been taking place. People are now able to protect their soils as opposed to soil erosion. The project runs out at the end of 2015. Those responsible believe people here will be able to come to grips with their problems themselves. We are hopeful that with the livelihoods that we've been able to improve in the short term, the longer term aspect will be able to cover up on all those aspects and ensure that the activities and the ideals that we put in place move through the communities in the life to come. In addition, the Conservation Authority wants to build up the tourist trade and attract more hikers and trekkers to the mountain, creating a completely new source of income for the people around Mount Elgin.